In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new Zemaboard 2. This is an x86 single board computer from a company known as Ice Whale, and they did pretty good with their original Zemaboard. One thing I really like here is actually the box, because it's not just a box for the unit, it actually functions as a stand for the Zemaboard and two 2.5 inch hard drives. This board can support up to 32 terabytes of storage utilizing two SATA drives. We've got enough connectors on this unit. And when it comes to the new CPU and RAM they opted to use here, it's much faster than the original. It's passively cooled, so the case itself is constructed of aluminum, and it should do a pretty decent job with the CPU they opted to use here. But I gotta say, my favorite thing about the Zimmerboard line is the fact that we've got a PCIe connector over here, so we can connect a real desktop GPU. We also get a few accessories inside of the box, like our SATA cabling, so we can connect two SATA drives to this unit, and we'll take a look at I.O. in just a bit. Plus, we get a 36 watt, 12 volt power supply. Once this thing's set up, looks a little something like this. I've just got a single 2.5 inch drive, 240 gigs to get me started. But yeah, you could set this up as a home media server, a little security system, ad blocker. Since this is an x86 board, we have tons of options for operating systems, including Windows if you wanted to go that route. When it comes to I.O. up front here, from the left to the right, we have a mini display port, and this is 1.4, two USB 3.1 ports, our power input, and up top, we've got two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. On the back side of the unit, we've got two 6 gig SATA ports and 12 volt output to power those drives. And of course, we've got that PCIe 3.0 X4 slot. This is definitely gonna come in handy for me because I do love connecting GPUs to small boards like this. We're gonna test it out in this video. When it comes to the overall specs of the new Zima Board 2, they opted to use the Intel N150. We've got four cores, four threads, and this is a pretty big jump over the older unit. Actually, three times the performance of the original Zima Board when it comes to CPU performance. This will clock up to 3.6 gigahertz. The built-in GPU is an Intel iGPU with 24 compute units up to 1000 MHz. You can get this with either 8 or 16 GB of LP DDR5 running at 4800 MHz, 32 or 64 GB of internal eMMC storage, but you can always run an operating system from a SATA drive on this thing. And like I mentioned, when it comes to operating systems, we've got so many options because it's an x86 platform. Whenever I see a board like this with a PCIe slot, the first thing I always think about is a GPU, but that's not the only thing you can connect. You could add more ethernet ports here, more SATA drives, an NVMe adapter, a USB array, it's really up to you. But like I mentioned, I just love connecting GPUs to things like these. So uh, first thought would be, you know, a smaller GPU. I've got a low profile RTX 3050, but with the included 36 watt power supply, we're just not gonna have enough power to power this RTX 3050. There's tons of ways around this. I mean, there's adapters online. You can go 12 volt over. You could use a Pico power supply, or you could go all out with something like the B-Link eGPU dog. Now, I was only able to utilize this with one of their mini PCs, and I've been looking for a use for it since. You might notice we've got a PCIe slot sticking out of the side. It's overkill for a board like this, I completely understand. But what I wanted to do here was connect an NVIDIA RTX 5060 Ti. It's also got a 600 watt power supply built in. And uh, again, it only worked with one of their mini PCs. And since then, I've been kind of wanting to use it with something else. So I think this is the perfect opportunity. I just plugged the Zimmer board right into that slot. And this thing also supports Wi-Fi and we've got an extra USB port. And with the correct drivers, I can get all of this working with the Zima board. First things first, I wanted to give you a look at Zima OS, and this is actually really awesome. And of course, since we've got an x86 board here, we can install basically any operating system we want. We can go with Windows 11. You can go with any variant of Linux as long as it supports an x86 CPU. This is what came pre-installed on the eMMC. It's a headless operating system, and you can access it anywhere in the world using a browser. And this is great because it's really easy to use. And like I showed you, we did install that 240 gig drive. Soon as I booted this up, logged into it, it asked me if I wanted to format it correctly and we're good to go with that drive. Uh, from here, files, I've got SSD storage. I've also got the internal storage and I think I actually may have drugged them over to my eMMC storage. Actually, let's check. No, there, here we go. So from my SSD, got a couple of videos here. 
I've just kind of imported them and uh, these will play just fine on that N150 streaming from it, 4K 60. Pretty decently high bitrate here. And you could always just use the built-in file explorer as your little media server if you want to, as long as you're accessing it from a browser. But if you wanted something a bit more in depth, you could install Plex if you want to, and they make it really easy because from the app store, we do have access to a bunch of different apps that we could install here. We don't even have to hit up terminal, but this is a pretty cool little operating system. I personally haven't messed with it that much, but on my original Zemo board, I was running Manjaro. But for this, I actually want to get Windows installed and test out some LLMs with the GPU connected and some gaming on this thing. Okay, so here we are with Windows 11 installed. Now, the only driver that I couldn't get installed directly from the updater was the Ethernet driver. So I did have to download the Intel Ethernet driver here, but it installed without a hitch. And as you can see, we've got the Intel N150, base clock of 800 megahertz, boost up to 3.6 on this. That's just on a single core, but we've only got four cores here and four threads. Again, the Zimmer Board 2 has 16 gigs of RAM. And of course, we added that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5060 Ti, which is going to be overkill. But I wanted to see if this could handle large language models, image generation, and even gaming. Now, uh, we're on the lower end side, obviously, with this CPU here. But another thing I wanted to show you here was what this GPU is running at over that PCIe slot. It's actually X4 3.0. And of course, the RTX 5060 Ti is X8 5.0. We should still see some pretty good speeds out of the GPU, but I know that N150 is going to have a hard time keeping up. The first thing I wanted to test here in Windows was some video and image generation. This is called Amuse, and it was really developed for AMD, but it works with NVIDIA. And uh, it's just simple to use in a video. You could go with Comfy UI or A1111. It's really up to you. This just makes it really easy. So uh, we'll actually go to expert mode here. We've got video generation and I'm gonna be using locomotion. We'll load it up. Down here, we've got uh, all of our stats. Uh, GPU is listed right here. And I believe this model only uses up to 10 gigs. Yeah, I think that's right. So we'll do a unicorn in the streets of New York City. I'm gonna go with Let's do 512, 512, 24 FPS. We'll do four seconds and see what happens. So right over here, we should get some major GPU usage in just a second, as soon as uh, everything is optimized. We're just doing 24 steps for these images. Basically, it's gonna create a set of images and overlap them automatically. Try to stay as close as possible to create a little four second video. And we can up the time we wanna do, but obviously it will take longer. I tried this just on the uh, N150 with the built-in Intel iGPU. I personally don't think it would have ever finished. It was trying its hardest, but there's just not enough power there. And with this RTX 5060 Ti, still took almost a minute. So 55 seconds there. And uh, yeah, you can see it's definitely AI. But obviously this is possible to do with the GPU connected. Next, we've got LM Studio, and I'm going to be using DeepSeek R1. I've already loaded it up, so we'll create a new chat, and I'm just going to ask it, how does the CPU really work? Over here, I've got our GPU listed. Yeah, and it's hitting it up 95%. This should tell us exactly how long it was thinking for once it's finished. And I actually thought it might be a little quicker than this. So 26 seconds. I think we can do better than that. Let's, uh, let me try one thing here. Let's do a GPU. Because I know this card and a real desktop PC does these smaller questions and about 15 to 20 seconds really depends. Yeah, 18 seconds. Okay, so how does a GPU really work? And this is all local. We're using that DeepSeek R1 distill. So when it comes down to it, yeah, you could generate images, you can generate videos, and uh, you can use some large language models here like DeepSeek on this machine, but you will need a GPU connected because that N150 is just gonna take absolutely forever for either of these tests that we ran. 
Next thing I wanted to do was test a little bit of gaming. And I know this N150 is really gonna hold this GPU back. Up in the top left hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. And uh, right now we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080 low settings. And I had to go to low because of the CPU. You can see that it's pegged out at 100% from Afterburner up there. And we're only pulling a little over 10 watts from the CPU. And at the end of the benchmark, 1080 low settings, we only had an average of 66 FPS. And this RTX 5060 Ti can do much better than this when it's paired up with a higher end CPU. The last game I wanted to test was Cyberpunk 2077. And uh, again, we've got Afterburner in the top left hand corner. You can see we're over 100 FPS with this. And the only reason this system can reach those frame rates right now is because I'm using DLSS 4's multi frame generation set to X4. We're at 1080 low, and low is because of the CPU. I mean, it's really gonna stress it out at ultra. But uh, with multi-frame gen, and even frame gen in general, I've noticed it really does help out with lower end CPUs for sure. Pretty crazy we're able to reach these kind of frame rates, but most of the frames that we're seeing right now are fake frames. So they're being generated by DLSS 4's multi-frame gen technology. Overall, not a bad little system when you're running a lighter weight operating system like Zima OS or something like Manjaro. I'm gonna go ahead and install Manjaro on this, mess around with it for a few days, and if I feel the need, I'll make another video. But I wanted to show this off with the GPU connected, and really the easiest way to get the newer drivers and everything like that is to use Windows. The board will run with Windows, you can connect to GPU. It's definitely not a gaming machine with that N150, but it was never promised to be a gaming machine. This is something I like to do with these little boards just to see, you know, how it would handle it. This is a great little home media server, a security system. There's tons of different ways that you could use the Zima board too. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave a link to their official website. They've got a Kickstarter going right now. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Zima board too, just let me know in the comments below. I'll put it in that next video. But that's going to wrap it up for our first look here. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.